to the Big Bang. Coming up in today's show... The strange but true story of Mary Anning, the daft dinosaur detective from Dorset. We'll show you how to make your own car that goes like the wind. And we investigate the strange substance that passes through everything. But first, a trick. Violet, a challenge for you. Can you make a platform out of these three plastic knives, right, on top of these three drinks cans? And the platform has to support this can round about there. I'll have a go if I go one, two... Will this fit? Yes, three mm -hmm. and... Where's the fourth one? There is no fourth <laughs> knife. It can be done with three. Watch this, right? You have to hold that there for mm -hmm. me, right? And if I put that one... Under there, like that. Right. Mm -hmm. I'll take this one and I weave it in, sort of under and over that one, like that. There it is. So you think that'll hold the can? Yeah, I can sense you're holding your breath. You don't believe I am, me, do I am. It's not going to happen. What's this? It's actually the weight of the can that binds those three together, making it a strong, safe platform. That's great. But I've got one for you. Yep. I can make two straight lines into a circle. Eh? I can. I'll be warping space and time by the end of the show. Eh? Stand by for the Big Bang Grand Prix. Three, two, one, go! Oh, Joe takes the lead by a huge margin, but Violet Burnett, look at that, she's coming up behind. And it's a win for Gareth Jones and his revolutionary design. What about these air-powered race cars then, eh? They're actually quite easy to make, as long as you've got one of these at home. It's a mineral water bottle. Start off by sticking straws on the body to form the supports for your axles. Take a kebab skewer and push it through a hole in the bottle top. Thread the skewer through the straw and add another bottle top. Do the same at the back and with a little bit of adjustment, there's your basic car. Gareth and I have got very different ideas about what will make the best engine for this particular race. You see, I think a jet engine is the best. And I've made my jet engine with the outside of a biro. I've pushed on a bit of plastic tubing to make a collar. A balloon goes on the end, which is fixed on tightly with an elastic band. Then thread the biro tube through two holes cut in the water bottle, and there's your balloon-powered jet car. Then just blow it up. Oh, and the wider your tube, the more quickly your car will go. But it won't go as far, so you've got to kind of match up speed and distance. Are you ready? Superjet car, go! Now that is a fantastic design for a jet-powered race car. But I reckon for this race, you need a design for a fantastic propeller-driven race car. Take another bottle cap with two angled slits cut on either side. Thread a paper clip through a cardboard disc and the bottle cap. Make two slits in the disc and line them up. Cut out some propeller blades from card and mount them on the slits that you've just made. Now that's your propeller, but add a little cardboard disc as a washer. What this does is cut down on friction. Now you're ready to mount the whole assembly. Glue a pair of lolly sticks and another bottle cap onto the back of your bottle. Then thread on your propeller. Make a hook and hook on an elastic band. Stretch it over the neck of the bottle and put some energy into your rubber motor by winding it up. Right, time to race Violet again. Ah, I see you've got plenty of fuel in your car. Not planning on making any pit stops, Gareth. <laughs> to the grid. Right then. Three, Three two, two, one, go! go! Oh, look at Yay! that! Look at the Jet first corner. power! Oh, what a win, pilot! Millions of years ago, dinosaurs walked on these beaches. When they died, they were buried in layers of sand and mud and eventually turned into fossils. Today's strange but true story is about a woman who devoted her life to finding fossils. Her name was Mary Anning and she ran a fossil shop in Lyme Regis. If you've ever been out looking for fossils, you'll know that spotting them is really difficult. And then 
When you found your fossil, the process of getting the fossil out of the rock is very long and very delicate. Mary Anning must have had enormous patience, but teasing the fossil out of the cliffs was only the start. Mary spent hours in a little shop, sorting her finds into different types and cleaning the mud and sand from them. She was very good at it, and before long, word of her fossils spread far and wide. <coughs> Afternoon, madam. Uh, Duke of Buckingham, renowned fossil collector. Hello, your lordship, sir. How may I help you? I'm looking for something a bit special. You know, millions of years old, head of a lizard, neck of a serpent, or perhaps even with the paddles of a whale. Oh, will that do ya? It's a fossilised plesiosaur skeleton. First one ever found. Yours for an hundred pound. I say, I say, I say. Sir, this is a fossil shop, not a joke shop. Do you want it or not? Uh, of course, it's an absolutely magnificent Well specimen. done. Do you want it gift wrapped? Uh, um... Every morning, Mary would visit the cliffs to see what the tides had revealed. Oh, what have we got here, my lovely? When she found a particularly rare fossil, she left a faithful dog behind to guard it, while she went to find help to dig it out. Now stay. Good dog. Stay. Good dog. One day, in 1811, Mary unearthed the fossilised skeleton of an ich... ich it's an ichthyosaur, though. You know nothing. Yeah, one of, one of those things. She lived in the sea, ancient creature. Big teeth and flippers. Have your eye out with one of them flippers. Oh, and the teeth. Have your arm off. Now stay. Stay. Good dog. Mary Anning's magnificent ichthyosaur is now a prize exhibit at London's Natural History Museum. Not bad for a daft lass from Dorset and a dog. Spirals. They make your eyes go funny, in a nice kind of way. This one's just made out of cardboard. But over here, we've got some fantastic spiral mobiles, and you can make them from stuff from all over the house. The great thing about spiral mobiles is, when they rotate, they look like they're either going up or going down. They're not, of course, it's just an optical illusion. But guess what? Making spiral mobiles is easy. Now, believe it or not, this mobile is actually made out of one of these. It's a poster tube. Now, if you look at a poster tube carefully, you can see that it's actually got a spiral seam going all the way up the tube. Now, what I've done is I followed that seam with some brightly coloured tape. Then I cut out alongside the tape and I ended up with a spiral mobile. Now, to mount the mobile, I've got a cocktail stick glued across the top and tied onto it is some fishing line. Now, if you think that mobile's good, check this one, right? Watch this. It looks like that ping pong ball is rolling up the mobile. It's not, of course, it's actually glued in place. My favourite spirals are these, made from lots of drinking straws in two different colours. Overlap them in pairs, bend the ends out, and tape them together in the middle. Use a cocktail stick to make a hole through the tape, then thread the straws onto some coat hanger wire. You'll need to get some help to straighten out the coat hanger and keep a cork on the end in case it's sharp. Spread out the pairs of straws to make the spiral, then glue them in place. The more you fan the straws, the tighter your spiral mobile will be. Magic. Stars, galaxies, clouds of gas, the stuff of the universe. Except there's just not enough of it. In fact, most of our universe is, um, well, it's missing. Today's big question. Where do you go to find the missing universe? The search begins underground. I'm going underground to look for particles that might make up the missing universe. 
tiny particles zipping around all over the place. Particles so small no one's ever seen them. Particles that pass straight through you. Particles called wimps. Is that it? Yeah, it is a silly name, isn't it? Yeah. And why am I underground? To show you why, I had to go out and buy loads and loads of sweets. What a shame. These strawberry ones represent the wimps which are raining down on us all the time. But also flying around up in space is lots of rubbish, cosmic rays. Oop, flying saucers don't actually exist, so I can eat that. Now, they're all mixed up, all mixed up, all and around. And what I've got to do is detect the wimps despite all the rubbish. For this, you need layers and layers of rock, or, in my case, badminton rackets. What happens is that when the wimps and the cosmic rays rain down on the Earth, each successive layer of rock filters out more of the rubbish until you're left with mainly wimps. So, to detect wimps, you need loads and loads of layers of rock. You need to get very deep underground. And I am very, very deep underground. In fact, I'm in the salt mine, a kilometre underneath the North Sea. There's salt everywhere down here. It gets carried around on the breeze, and um, when you lick your lips, you can actually taste salt. We had a bag of chips to go with it. <laughs> but the older parts of the mine have now been turned into a wimp-catching laboratory. Down here, the physicists have built themselves a device which can detect wimps. There's a crystal just like this one in this tank behind me. Here's my crystal and here's my wimp. Now watch what happens. Because wimps go through us, bricks, rocks, just about anything, you'd think a puny little crystal's not going to bother them, right? Well, sometimes. Something similar happens in the crystal. Every now and then, a wimp will make little sparks appear in here. And eventually, that's shown as a pulse on a computer screen. So, the first glimpse of the missing universe could come as a line on a screen inside this room. Most of the time, the screens remain blank because the wimps are passing straight through the crystal. However, every now and again, something wonderful happens. So, this line could be a trace of the missing universe. It's going to take several years to find out if wimps actually exist and if there's enough of them. But given time, this experiment down here might well tell us what the universe is made of. So, where do you go to find the missing universe? Down one of the deepest mines in Europe. How are you getting on with my trick then? Sorted, right? No problem. You said you could turn a straight line into a circle. So can I. Right, here's a piece of paper with a straight line on it. Watch this. Roll it round on itself and <laughs> it's a circle. Well, that's quite good, but it's not what I had in mind. And it's one straight line and I said two straight lines. Ah. OK, what you need is two straight lines, a paper clip, poke it through the back and... Are you ready? Mm hmm Now it's two straight lines and now... It's a circle! Oh, definitely circular, yeah. You see, what's happening is your brain can't keep up, so it blurs the two lines together into a circle, if you do it really fast. That is an optical illusion, isn't it? Yeah, two yeah. straight lines, Yeah. one circle. Yeah, when well, you've shown me that now, yeah, yes. Two yeah. straight lines, yeah. first of all, right, OK. Yes, you've made your point, look, it turns <laughs> into a circle if you do it Yeah, I know, I know! Stand back a bit, you can see...